Hello, it's Marla once again. Today we're going to talk about the Scorpio full moon that's happening on May 7th. So let's go back a little bit. Let's go back to the beginning of the astrological new year with the equinox and the Aries new moon. And at that new moon, really embracing our sense of self, our ability to assert ourselves, our ability to know ourselves truly. This is something that we we do, you know, every cycle that we go around the zodiac and we do this, but each time we go through this, we're integrating more. We're empowering ourselves more. So then we have the Libra full moon after that and we release some of our codependency. Then we had the Taurus new moon two weeks ago. And we really had to take a look at our gifts and our abilities and our self-worth and being able to acknowledge our self-worth, to really appreciate and love ourselves. Now we have the Scorpio full moon. And at this full moon, we're going to work on releasing those beliefs that are still hindering us from believing in ourselves. And this is an important step for the Gemini new moon that's happening on May 22nd because we're going to be called to speak out more and more as light workers. And in order to do that, we have to have confidence in ourselves. We have to believe in ourselves and believe in our message. So the message that's coming through with this Scorpio full moon is really about focusing on our empowerment. The sign of Scorpio really embodies leadership when it's in its true state. Remember, there's there's three different energies associated with associated with Scorpio. There's the scorpion that stings. That's the manipulator. That's the control energy. That's the energy that wants retribution. There's the eagle that's beginning to rise above, that sees the higher perspective. And then there's the phoenix that through its ultimate destruction, it rises again, better and more powerful. So with this full moon, we're integrating this phoenix energy. And that's why I've chosen this emblem today for this video. We are rising higher. We're at this timeline split and light workers are needing to shift to the fifth dimensional frequencies now. And in order to do that, we need total empowerment. One of the karmic issues with Scorpio has to do with power. As I said, do we have too much power? Do we use our power to manipulate? Do we give our power away? Most light workers coming into this incarnation have dealt with multiple lifetimes of allowing other people to take our power away. And sometimes we surrendered our power um, because we, we were being controlled or we weren't strong enough. Okay, but we do have to take responsibility for those times where we didn't activate our power. One of the elements of Scorpio is about intimate relationships, merging with another person, and our desire to be one with the other person, to feel accepted, to feel validated, has created a codependence that creates a lot of disempowerment. So we're needing to face that now. In order to embrace the Phoenix energy, we have to be free. And lightworkers, you've done so much work to free yourself. Twin flames, especially. You've done so much work to free yourself in these kind of, um, especially romantic scenarios. And I'm sure many of you are feeling like me where it's just not possible to go back to that old type of relationship 
with so much codependency and control that you have to be like attached to each other at the hip and you have to like the same things and you have to dim your shine for the other person. We've suffered that too much being told to dim our light, to please another person, to make another person comfortable not doing that anymore. Another big element of Scorpio is death. And there's a lot of releasing happening right now. We are in a big death cycle. Scorpio is an energy that needs to learn to let it go. And only when we learn to let it go do we become the phoenix. And in some cases that letting go is going to mean that relationships need to be let go of. If a person is trying to disempower you, if they're trying to steal your shine, no, you're not doing that anymore, remember? You're going to put a stop to that. Now again, we have to take responsibility for ourselves. We've claimed our sovereignty now. So if if people are trying to take advantage of us, if we're not standing up for ourselves, that's on us. We've grown enough that we know what we need to do. And some, sometimes it's still hard to release. It's still hard to accept that we're the powerful beings that we are. But with this full moon, we can work through some of that death energy. Um, I'm sure that many of you are experiencing wild dreams like I've been having for the last week. It's a lot of sorting things out and integrating and clearing happening in the dream state. And in other ways, I know some of you are dealing with needing to let go of actual relationships in your life because, you know, you're just on a different page with people right now. And that's okay. People are polarized. As I said in my last video, there's no point arguing with people, trying to get them to see your point of view. In some ways, that's disempowering because that person is putting you in a position where you feel you have to defend yourself or validate your position. We don't need to do that anymore. Sure, speak your truth, share your stuff. but. If people don't get it, just let them go. Remember, you need to protect your energy. And so when you put yourself in the position of having to explain yourself, you know, it goes back to dimming your shine. When we claim our sovereignty, we're here to be free beings. And I've been talking about freedom. A lot of people misinterpret my discussion about freedoms to be necessarily about America. But freedom isn't just for America. The world needs to be free. We cannot be the highest expression of our souls unless we are free in every society. It's about being allowed to be ourselves and to share from our heart. So um, it's not a politicized thing. It's a soul thing. <laughs> Your soul wants to be free on every level. And it's only fear that stops your soul from being free. It's ego. And the energy of Scorpio is the battle between the ego and the soul, and which one is going to win. Fear is related to the ego, and that brings us into disempowerment, where the soul is love. And when we're in the vibration of love, then we're coming from a place of empowerment. Again, ego relates more to that scorpion energy. But when we become the phoenix, we become the soul. The soul has to shed all of the shadow. 
which of course is Scorpio. The secrets, the things that we keep hidden, all the guilt, all the shame, all the things that make us feel disempowered, that we try to hide from everybody. We have to work through that. If there's any of that still there, well, I don't want to say that. <laughs> that might be a little extreme because, of course, we're like this shadow has so many layers. But there is a tipping point. There's a tipping point where you clear enough that what other people think doesn't matter because you're living from your soul. And that's where so many of you light workers are, myself included. We're ready to live from the soul. That means the shadow no longer has a hold on us. The shadow is still there. Don't get me wrong. There's still things to work through. But you get to the point where fear becomes an opportunity to advance yourself. Fear no longer is disabling. My guides told me, you know, a couple years ago, when you feel fear, don't let it immobilize you. Let it uh, inspire you. Let it, um, I'm trying to think of the words, let it bring that passion and that energy of, you know, no, I'm going to work through this. And it's that death, you know, that death that we struggle with as human beings. Death in the sense of just releasing, although the actual physical death plays a big role in our shadow and in the fears that we carry. But, you know, we have to just learn to let go. Again, that's living from our soul. Our soul doesn't need to attach to any of those things anymore because we can go with the flow. We know that there's a bigger picture. Even when things look bleak, it's an illusion because source, our higher self, is always in control of what is happening. And so there's nothing to be afraid of. There's only triggers to help us excel our ascension process and then integrating stronger and more powerful energy so that we can have the self-confidence to be who we are, even in some cases to claim our shadow. No one is perfect. We all have those shadow elements. But they're nothing to um, inhibit us. They're part of being human. And on a soul level, we understand these human things and that we make mistakes, that things don't always go perfectly. But we always go back to love and acceptance and forgiveness. And so we're at this stage where we're ready for a type of rebirth. We're ready to claim more of this Phoenix energy and we're ready to rise. There's no place for fear in the fifth dimension. And as we rise, we reach this full empowerment because the soul is in charge. So I'm not going to talk so much about the astrology today because I just wanted to really deliver that message. But I am going to read to you the Sabian symbols. The degree of the sun and the moon are going to be at 17 degrees, Scorpio and Taurus. The moon will be on the Sabian, a quiet path through woods, brilliant in autumn coloring. And so this, this relates to that death energy that I'm talking about. Scorpio governs the fall energy and here the leaves are in their colors and what happens in the fall the leaves die and they drop they let go and so that's very much the energy that we're embodying right now letting go of the lower 3d aspects so that we can transform ourselves 
the leaves here are symbolizing the change that we're going through. It also reminds us of nature and the sustenance that we can gain from nature right now. It's really important to tune out of technology and to spend time in nature or in contemplation in solitude to help your transformation happen. I've been off uh, social media for the last four days. It's my second time this month that I've taken a break from social media and it feels so good <laughs> um, to just be able to focus on me and have that quiet time and not have to fight through the negative energies that are um, you know, connected to social media. The sun is going to be on the Sabian symbol, a woman airing an old bag through a sunny window to give it air and sunshine. Again, we have a nod here to clearing, to purging. It is spring, and um, you know what do we do in spring? We, we air things out. We do a spring cleaning. Well, we're doing a spring cleaning on <laughs> ourself. We're doing a spring cleaning on our ego. And we're bringing in the air and the sunshine to those shadow elements that we haven't been able to see or quite figure out until now. And when we bring the light to it, we transform it. We transform it from what was disempowering to what it becomes empowering for us. Because we're transforming fear within that process. And this, this one also talks about a sunny window and air and sunshine. So we know so many people have been saying that the sun and getting out and getting fresh air is important to assist our shift and to maintain our health. So make sure that you're getting outside and into the air, like literally as much as possible. So thank you so much, guys. If you would like a personal astrology reading with me, a hypnosis session, an intuitive reading, my website is Twin Astrology. I'm sending you all a lot of love and blessings and your transformation. Namaste.